Sheikh Muhammad Ali Shamali uh, to continue with his series of lectures on globe before and after the advent of Imam Mahdi alayhi salam. Uh, he has covered various topics. Uh, one was the concept uh, and definition of Akhir Zaman and yesterday he discussed the issue of the Akhir Zaman according to world religions and today he is going to talk about Akhir Zaman according to Islamic sources. Dr. Shamali is a graduate of the Islamic Seminary of Qom and has a doctorate in, philosoph <coughs> in philosophy from the University of Manchester. Salawat. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-Ali al-Azim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina wa bil qasim al-Mustafa Muhammad. وعلى آله التيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره Tonight we إن شاء الله talk about the intellectual situation before and after the advent of Imam Mahdi I mean by intellectual situation what is related to human understanding, to human thought. And uh, to some extent also, this is related to the issue of religiosity of people. But uh, we will have a separate discussion about religiosity. But because somehow these are related, so tonight also we will refer to the religiosity of the people. Uh, you know that According to Islam, knowledge and understanding and thinking, reflection, contemplation, all these are very, very important. And the Quran is full of reference to the significance of thinking, either by using terms such as tafakkur, or tadabbur, or shu'ur, or ilm, or ma'rifa. Different, different terms are used in different forms, but all refer to the significance of understanding. So this is why we should see what would be the level of understanding of people before and after the advent of Imam Mahdi alayhi salam. There are many hadith in this regard. We have to be very selective. One of the things that we find in hadith is that in Akhirul Zaman there would be many people who have doubts, serious doubts. It will become like an you know, epidemic illness. Many people would have doubt. And this doubt would be in respect to many, many things. But first of all, it would be in respect to uh, fundamental questions of life. What is our origin? What are we going you know, to witness in the end? And what should we do? It's like being you know, confused, a kind of confusion that would uh, be very much uh, popular in Akhir zaman Because people are faced with many, many ways of thinking, many, many ways of uh, talking about humanity, about the world, about creation, about what is proper course of action. And so there is a real sense of doubt among many people. Even among mu'mineen, even among the people who believe in imams, among the Shia, would be doubt because of the 
long life of Imam Zaman, so many people would uh, start thinking, maybe they don't dare to say that, but in their heart they would say, oh, if there were such a person as Imam Zaman, why he has not come? How many more years we have to wait for him? So people uh, start thinking that maybe this is not a real you know, and true a story that we have been told. So this doubt and this uh, kind of confusion would be very much spread and popular. I refer to some hadith. There is a hadith which the late Sheikh Tusi has narrated in his book, al Ghaybah. You know, we have al Ghaybah by Sheikh Nu'mani, which I mentioned last night. We have also Ghaybah by Sheikh Tusi. For example, referring to Akhir al-Zaman and the time of Ghaybah, Hadith says, فَإِنَّ ذَلَكَ يَرْتَابُ الْمُبْتَلُونَ In that time, in that age, Mubtalun, which I am going to define, would start having lots of doubts. But these doubts are not real doubts. These are not logical doubts. These are doubts for the people who want to be in doubt. You know, Yartabul Mubtelun, those people who are after falsity, they want to have doubt. We have similar ayah in the Quran about uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, مَا كُنْتَ تَتْلُو مِنْ قَبْلِهِ مِنْ كِتَابٍ وَلَا تَخُطُّهُ بِيَمِينِكَ إِذَنْ لَرْتَابَ الْمُبْتَلُونَ You never read anything and you never wrote anything because if you had read something or if you had written something in the past then the people who are مُبْتَلُون the people who are after falsity would have had doubt. The people who are real after argument and after logic they would say it doesn't make any difference whether this person has read or written before or not what he says is beyond human capacity but the people who just are after finding some excuses would have said okay this man has read this somewhere or has learned somewhere so they would have said this is not from God okay so there is a difference between having genuine doubt and between having some pseudo doubt. You may have heard the story of Ibn Sina and his student Bahman Yar. Bahman Yar himself was a great philosopher and he has a very important book, At Tahsil, which is one of the important sources of Islamic philosophy. Once in a journey, Ibn Sina and Bahman Yar were together. And Bahman Yar, it's been said that sometimes we're telling Ibn Sina that you are such a genius person and such a great person. You know, Ibn Sina was a very special man. And most of the knowledge that he had was not through listening to the teachers. You know, mostly it was his own thinking and teaching himself. Anyway, this man told him, you know, in the past, I told him, you know, if you claim some high position, everyone would, you know, accept. Anyway, Ibn Sina, you know, didn't say anything till they were together in a journey. And in the night, it was very cold, like now, you know, it was very cold, and Ibn Sina told during the night, when they were sleeping, you know, woke up and told his student, could you please bring me some water? And then his student said, there is no need for water, you know, it's very cool, and you know, maybe it hurts you, maybe you get catch cold, and you know, so, I started, you know, causing some doubts. These are not genuine doubts. And Ibn Sina said, no, I am, you know, thirsty and I need one. So he brought lots of doubts. And then Muazzin 
went to, up to the minarets and started calling for prayer. And then Ibn Sina said, look, this is the difference between me and the Prophet. The Prophet lived centuries ago, and now this man, without seeing the Prophet, without having even one session with the Prophet, after centuries, has left his bed and his house, has come to the mosque, going up to the minaret and calling for the prayer because of his love for the Prophet. But you, being with me for many years and close a student of me, I want you a cup of water, you are just creating, you know, some questions, endless questions. So this is the deal. So sometimes these questions and doubts are not, you know, real doubt. But anyway, this culture of doubt and skepticism would be very popular in Akhir al-Zaman. Imam Ali, alayhi salam, quotes from the Prophet, and this is in Kamal al-Din by Shaykh al-Saduq. So Imam Ali is quoting from the Prophet. Al-Mahdi min wuldi. Mahdi is from my progeny. Takunu lahu qaybatun wa hayratun. There would be an occultation for him, and there would be hayra, which means confusion, perplexity. Tadillu fi hal umam. Nations would go astray. Not one person, two people. Peoples, nations, would go astray. There is a hadith from Imam Sadiq salam, which is very good and it's Bashara for us, insha'Allah, if we are good mu'min. This is very beautiful hadith. And whenever I read this hadith, uh, I become happy. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, this is in Bihar al-Anwar, volume 52, page 95. Aqrabu ma yakun al-abd ila Allah azza wa jal wa arda ma yakun an izaftaqadu hujjat Allah. This is Bishara for us. The time in which Allah is closest to his servant, and happiest with his servant is when they miss Hujjah of Allah. When Hujjah of Allah is not with them. Because we feel very sorry for ourselves, you know, that we don't have this, you know, privilege to see Hujjah of Allah. We don't have privilege to see the Prophet or Imams. Our Im our hujja of our age is not with us in the sense that we can understand. Of course, he's with us, but in the sense that we can understand, uh, he's not with us. But this hadith is Bashara. He says, indeed, you must not feel very sorry. Because this is the time that you have the chance that Allah would be happier with you and closer to you than the people who were able to sit with the Prophet or Imams and listen to them. إِذَا افْتَقَدُوا حُجَّةَ اللَّهِ فَلَمْ يَزْهَرْ لَهُمْ وَحَجَبَ عَنْهُمْ فَلَمْ يَعْلَمُوا بِمَكَانَ The hujja of Allah is missing. He is not visible and we don't know where he is. وَهُمْ فِي ذَلِكَ يَعْلَمُونَ but still they are sure and certain that Hujjah of Allah is there. فَإِنْدَهَا فَلْيَتَوَقَّعُ الْفَرَجْ صَبَاحًا وَمَسَاحًا If this happens, when mu'mineen miss the Hujjah of Allah, but still they are sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would never let Earth without Hujjah, the whole world without Hujjah, then these people should expect Faraj, mornings and in the evenings.
و ان اشد ما یکون غضبا على اعدائه اذا افقدهم خجته and on the other hand the time that Allah is most angry with his enemies is the time of qaybah because the hujja is not there you know it's like when you have some orphans and then there are people who are enemies of your orphans so you feel more passionate towards orphans and more angry towards the people who are annoying these orphans we are orphans of Ahlul Bayt we are Aytama Ali Muhammad in Akhir Zaman we are all orphans because our father and mother is not with us so Allah is very close to us and Allah is very much supportive of us in the time of Qibah and also very angry to the people who are hostile then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَقَدْ عَلَمَ أَنَّ أَوْلِيَاءَهُ لَا يَرْتَابُونَ Allah knew that genuine mu'minin would not have doubt لَوْ عَلَمَ أَنَّهُمْ يَرْتَابُونَ مَا أَفْقَدَهُمْ خُجَّتَهُ تَرْفَتَعِينَ If Allah had known that genuine mu'minin would start doubting then even for a blink of eye Allah would not have taken away his hujjah okay this is why I told you the people who have doubt this doubt is pseudo doubt but a person who is mu'min it doesn't make any difference for him whether Imam Zaman is in the state of occultation for 10 years or 10,000 of years what makes what difference it makes if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the power to give us life and death so does it make any difference whether he gives us life for 10 years or 10,000 years it doesn't make any difference logically it doesn't make any difference so Allah knows that real mu'mineen genuine mu'mineen people like you they would never have doubt and if he had known that genuine mu'mineen would have doubt then he would never have taken his hujjah. This is very good bashara that inshallah includes all of us. Another thing that we have which is also bashara, not for all people, but for some group of people, is that in Akhiru Zaman, despite all the problems, despite all the confusions and skepticism, there are people who are very profound in their knowledge and in their understanding. This is a hadith from Imam Sajjad alayhi salam. When Imam Sajjad alayhi salam was asked about Tawheed, what is the real concept of Tawheed? Then Imam Sajjad alayhi salam said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that in Akhir zaman there would be people who are profound and deep in their understanding. Aqvamun muta'amqun, people who are very deep, very sharp, very profound in their understanding. And because of them, Imam Sajjad says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anzalallahu ta'ala qul huwallahu ahad, وَالْآيَاتِ مِنْ سُورَةِ الْحَدِيدِ إِلَىٰ قَوْلِهِ وَهُوَ عَلِيمٌ بِذَاتِ الصُّدُورِ Surah Tawheed and beginning of Surah Al-Hadid are revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those people who come in Akhir al-Zaman and have such a profound and deep understanding. The people who understand what does it mean Allah al-Samad The people who understand what does it mean huwal awwalu wal akhir wal zahiru wal batin Who can explain this without philosophical training and without being profound in understanding So 
the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that these people are coming in Akhur zaman so Allah revealed these verses. Of course, the people who lived in the time of Prophet, they understood something. They were Arabs and knew Arabic properly. Certainly they understood something. What does it mean? Qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad. They knew. But the real meaning of this is only understood by those people who come in Akhir zaman Okay? And now, Alhamdulillah, we know about these, you know, ayah much more than the people who lived in that time. So, it would not be difficult to argue from these hadith that in Akhir zaman there would be some people, not all people, not even majority, but there are people in Akhir zaman who have no doubt, no sort of doubt, they have certainty, and they have profound understanding. This is even before Imam Zaman comes, okay? Now, the question is, what would happen when Imam Zaman comes? Would it be a still something just for a very select number of people, or when Imam Zaman comes, whole humanity would change for better. Before that, there is another hadith also from the, uh, Imam Sajjad alayhi salam. I should mention this uh, so that my discussion become, inshallah, somehow complete. Then I go to the time of uh, Imam Zaman. This is again from Imam Sajjad alayhi salam. And Imam Sajjad alayhi salam says that uh, the occultation of the twelfth successor of the Prophet would become long. This is Imam Sajjad saying some generations in a before. He said the occultation would become long. Then he says the people who live in that time of occultation and believe in his imama and await his coming, they are better than the people of every other age. Al Muntazarun Lizuhurahi. Afzalu Ahle Kulla Zaman. Of course, this is relatively speaking. It doesn't mean that every single person in this time is better than every single person in the time of the Prophet or Imam Hussein or whatsoever, you know? We are relatively and generally speaking. So individuals can be found that who are better than the people. But generally speaking, these people are better than people in any other time. Why? What is the reason? Is it because they worship more? Is it because they pray more? Is it because they work more? What? What is the reason? Imam says, no, this is because they understand more. Because everything goes back to understanding, goes back to aql. If a person who has good understanding worships, this is useful. Otherwise, it would be like that person who was worshipping in an island and an angel, you know, this is in hadith that in the time of previous prophets, then angel, so this man is wholeheartedly worshipping and went to see what this man is saying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what is, you know, the way he prays, you know. So he went and saw that this man is saying, Alhamdulillah, everything is perfect. I have health, there is plenty of, you know, food here, lots of trees and, you know, grass, everything. I have only one complaint, you know, one pain in my heart. And that is, I don't know where is the donkey of Allah so that I can feed him here, you know, properly. This was the mentality of this person. 
He saw that Allah is a person who has donkey and then he was thinking if he knew where is the donkey of Allah, he could feed him properly. Okay, so what is the value of the worship of this person? Okay, I'm not saying it has no value, but the more important is the understanding, the depths of understanding. So Imam Sajjad alayhi salam says, these people who believe in Imam of Imam Zaman, in the time of Ghaybah, when, he bec when it becomes, the Ghaybah becomes very long, are better than any other people. Why? لَأَنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى ذِكْرُهُ And you know, we must be very proud of Islam, especially Islam of Ahlul Bayt, that so much emphasis has been put on understanding and on knowledge and on intellect. لَأَنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى ذِكْرُهُ أَعْتَاهُمْ مِنَ الْأُغُولِ وَالْأَفْخَامِ وَالْمَعْرِفَةِ مَا صَارَتَ الْغِيبَ عِنْدَهُمْ بِمَنْزَلَةِ الشُّهُودِ Allah has given them so much knowledge and understanding that for them, seeing their Imam or not seeing their Imam is the same. The people who have superficial knowledge, they always want to see. Before they see, they cannot believe. They, they must see so that they can believe. Even, you know, they told the Prophet Musa, ask your Lord to show himself to us. And Musa, you know, also said, Rabbi Arana Jahra. He wanted to tell them, you know, that this is impossible. So he said, show us, and then you know what happened. But these people have been so much understanding and intelligence that for them, seeing Imam Zaman or not seeing Imam Zaman is the same. Like seeing Allah and not seeing Allah. Now that you cannot see Allah by your eyes, does it make any difference? Indeed, if we could have seen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by our eyes, we would not have believed in Him. But that would be a limited being. And Imam says, Imam Sajjad, these people are like al-mujahideen bayna yaday Rasulullah bisayf. These people are like the people who were fighting with the Prophet, with their swords. We are not fighting, we are not doing anything, but inshallah, if we have this understanding and this faith, Allah would give us the same reward that He gave to the people who took part in Badr and Uhud and Khandaq. These are the people who have pure intention and have purified themselves, and these are the genuine Shia. These are the people who invite and call people toward the religion of Allah, Serran wa Jahra, secretly or publicly. Means they don't lose any opportunity to call for the religion of Allah, and maybe it means that their very being and existence is a call. Even if they are silent, the presence calls and invites and encourages everyone to be mu'min. So this is very important. I read one more hadith and inshallah uh, I try to finish you know, this, this, this part of the discussion quickly. Another hadith is from Imam Bagr alayhi salam. Now we are entering to the state after Imam Zaman comes. This is from Imam Bagr alayhi salam. This is in Kafi. Indeed, it is in very big, uh, you know, beginning of Kafi, in Kitab al-Aql wal jahl And Abi Ja'far alayhi salam, قال, إذا قام قائمنا عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وزع الله يده على رؤوس العباد This hadith needs reflection uh, Please, you know, pay attention and also between tonight and tomorrow also think about it وزع الله يده على رؤوس العباد فجمع بها أغولهم وكملت به أحلامهم 
when the 12th Imam comes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts his hand. Whose hand? Maybe hand of Allah or maybe hand of Imam Zaman. This pronoun can refer back to Allah or to Imam Zaman. Allah puts his hand. Okay? So there are two ways of interpreting this. Allah puts his own hand like Yadullah Fogaidihim, which of course is a metaphorical expression. Allah doesn't have any hand. But when you say Yadullah is above their hand, means the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above their hands. Anyway, Allah puts his hand Allah Ru'usil Ibad on heads of his servants. This is very important. Doesn't say Allah puts his hand on the heads of Mu'mineen, on heads of Shia, on heads of Mukhlisin. No. Allah Ru'usil Ibad. Allah puts his hand on heads of his servants. So this is a change. Up to the time of Imam Zaman, we had a culture of skepticism and doubt, and a very select group of people who were very top in understanding, indeed better than previous generations. But when Imam Zaman comes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts his hand on heads of servants of him, means all people. Allah puts together their intellects. And inshallah, I talk about this. What does it mean, Allah puts together their intellects? Then their understanding becomes complete. This hadith is difficult to understand, you know, what does it mean? First of all, this refers to a very comprehensive and general change. This would not be limited to any group of people. This would be something for all humanity. Okay? First. Second, this is something which has no easy explanation. Because Allah doesn't, for example, you know, send more books, more prophets, or you know, ask people to read more. No. Allah is putting his hand, either hand of Imam Zaman on the heads of people or his own hand. It makes no difference because in, this is act of Allah. This is important. Even if Imam Zaman does something, Imam Zaman is an instrument in hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? Imam Zaman cannot do anything from himself. So this means that this is an act of Allah. This is a divine act that Allah has a special provision, providence for the people when Imam Zaman comes. So Imam Zaman is an instrument here. It's because of him and through him that Allah does this. When he puts his hand on their heads, doesn't put his hand on their chest or arm or leg. Allah puts his hand on the most important part of our body, and that is head. And of course, head refers to our mind and understanding, not this physical head. Okay? Not as, you know, bones and, you know, brain, as if in a physical sense. It means that Allah directly addresses to human understanding. Okay, what does this do? Allah puts together their intellects. What does it mean? It can mean 
one of these two, at least I understand one of two things, but maybe if you think you can find more. Either it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by putting his hand on heads of people, brings reconciliation and agreement among the people. So that instead of fighting and opposing each other, they put together their understanding and help each other so they understand more. Put together their intellects. What does it mean? We have hadith, for example, that the most clever person is the one who puts together knowledge of others and understanding of others to his own knowledge. It means that he benefits from the advice of others, from consultation of others, from views of others. A person who is not clever always says, no, everything others say is rubbish. I am the only person who understands. He doesn't agree, you know, anything. He doesn't accept anything. So in Akhir al-Zaman, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts his hand or hand of Imam al-Zaman on heads of people, puts together their intellect. What does it mean? So one possibility is that then people, people, instead of fighting and rejecting and denying each other, they all come to a harmonious way of thinking. Because unfortunately, although we are six billions or more than six billions of people who are living, but our understanding and our aql is not multiplied in six billions. Indeed, we are, you know, somehow neutralizing each other, somehow, you know, blocking the understanding of each other. So, this is one explanation. Puts together intellects of people. Second interpretation can be this. Even in respect to every person, Allah puts together his aql. In the first interpretation, we were saying that Allah puts aql of you and your friend and another friend and another person all together. It means individual aql are put together. Okay, this is the first interpretation. In the second per, uh, interpretation, we talk about every aql, every person. Unfortunately, in, especially in modern life, our understanding is very much weak. Why? Because we don't have concentration. There are too many extractions. We think about many, many things which are not useful for us. And it's very difficult to find a person who has full control of his mind. So he decides about what to think and then without any distraction he can think about it. And you know how much we memory we lose, how much understanding you know, we lose when we don't have concentration. We have in some hadith, you know, that there are certain things that causes weakness of memory. For example, one of the things that causes weakness of memory is to walk in graveyard on the graves or to walk between women who are not your mahram. So how does this make your memory weak? Because then you will lose your concept. You will start thinking about who was this person who died? When did he die? Always you think about this. Or if you are walking between two na mahram, then you will start thinking you know, about things which are not necessary for you to think. So this loss of concentration makes your mind very weak. But if you can have control, okay, so the second interpretation is that in the time of Imam Zaman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps people 
to concentrate on what is beneficial. And this releases lots of energy, which are wasted in our time. But in that time, we will save all those energies and spend it on something which is beneficial. This is the second interpretation. Maybe there are more, and this is just what I can understand at this time. Okay, then when Allah does this, Kamulat Behi Ahlamhum. Allah puts together their intellects, then their understanding becomes complete. Allah doesn't say, then Allah makes his understanding complete. No. The second is natural outcome, the first. So Allah puts their intellect together, then their understanding becomes perfect. Okay? Because when you have help of each other or when you have concentration, then you can understand better. So, this is a general phenomenon in the time of Imam Zaman. And with this, you would not be surprised if you hear that many, many people would believe in Imam Zaman. Because if the understanding of the people goes higher, then it would be much easier for them to believe in Imam Zaman compared to the, those people who are very you know, superficial and very short-sighted or one-sighted in their vision and they only believe in what they can see or what they can you know, eat <laughs> or what they can drink. So it would be very easy for the people to believe in Imam Zaman. I <clears throat> think it's enough for us tonight, inshallah, we continue in the... Uh, I will have a uh, question and answer, I'll be a short one this time. Uh, any questions from the ladies' side? Assalamu alaikum. Uh, you said that um, during the time of uh, Imam Zaman, um, it, it will be peace, tranquility, and everything, I mean, no crimes, um, and people will live very happily. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as you say, put his hand on, on his servants. Does that mean that we'll, it's like living in Jannah? And secondly, all those people, maybe six billion or more, who will believe in Imam Zaman al Islam and they will be nice and kind to each other, will they all go to Jannah? I didn't say there will be no crime or all will believe. I, I just said the knowledge and understanding of people would increase and I said you would not be surprised if many people believe. This is what I said. I didn't say all people believe and there would be no crime. We will talk about this when we talk about the moral situation. Any other any questions from the system? Because, you know, just briefly, human beings are free. In the end, whatever you do, still there is chance that some people want to do mischief. Because the problem is not always lack of understanding. There are people who want to deliberately do mischief. So even when Imam Zaman comes, Imam Zaman will not force people to be good. But the chance for the people to be good is much more compared to our time that there are so many, you know, temptations and distractions. But inshallah we will talk about this. Any questions from the uh, ladies' side? I think we should continue. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. You know that there is a masterpiece of poem on Imam Hussein in Farsi by Muhtasham Kashani. And some of the couplets of his poem is so popular that every place you go in Iran or even if maybe even you have here, you know, when you have these black, you know, flags, some of his poems are written and it's maybe some kind of inspiration 
that he had, you know, that he could make these, compose these poems. I chose some of these couplets uh, from Muhtasham, and inshallah I will try to translate. The first two couplets are very, very famous, but uh, the rest maybe you have not heard. باز این چه شورش است که در خلق عالم است باز این چه نوح و چه عذاب و چه ماتم است He says What is again this passion that is everywhere among the people What is this mourning and sorrow and grief that is everywhere So he's referring to the coming of Muharram again. باز این چه رستخیز عظیم است که از زمین بی نفخ سور خواسته تا عرش اعظم است. What kind of resurrection is this that without being blown, without trumpet being blown, the resurrection has started. Every person is in action and movement. Not only every person, every part of this world is shaking. Still, there is no the resurrection, the final resurrection, but it's a kind of resurrection. In subh tire baz damid az koja. کزو کار جهان و خلق جهان جمله در هم است What is this dark morning? Normally when there is morning, morning after, you know, beginning of day, everything is bright, everything is shining. But he says, what is this dark day that has started? That everything in this world is in chaos. What is this? گویا طلوع می کند از مغرب آفتاب کاشوب در تمامی ذرات عالم است It seems as if today sun has risen from the west and this is why there is no order in this, in this world everything is chaos گر خانمش قیامت دنیا بعید نیست این رستخیز عام که نامش محرم است If I call this resurrection whose name is محرم If I call this قیامه It's not very you know, far from understanding It's not very unlikely That I can call this is a resurrection This is a قیامه در بارگاه قدس که جای ملال نیست سرهای قدسیان همه بر زانوی قم است این ملکوت in the kingdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in which there must be no sadness it's, it's supposed that there should be no sadness among the angels but what has happened in Muharram that even angels are all sorrowful <coughs> and mourning. Jinn <coughs> and Malak bar Adamian nohemi konand. Guya azay ashraf aulad Adam ast. Jinns and angels are crying because this is when. The son of the best creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is martyred. Khurshid asman wa zamin, nur mashriqain, parwarde kenar rasul khuda Hussain. The son of a sky and earth. A sky and earth has son. This is Hussain. And the light of east and west, and the one who was brought up by the Prophet, Hussein, he is martyred, and this is why 
there is such a disorder in the whole world. باز این چه شورش است که در خلق عالم است باز این چه نوح و چه عزا و چه ماتم است باز این چه رست خیز عظیم است که از زمین بی نفخ سور خواست تا عرش اعظم است این صبح تیر باز دمید از کجا کزو کار جهان و خلق جهان جمله در هم است گویا طلو می کند از مغرب آفتاب کاشوب در تمامی ذرات عالم است گر خانمش قیامت دنیا بعید نیست این رس خیز عام که نامش محرم است در بارگاه قدس که جای ملال نیست سرای قدسیان همه بر زانوی غم است جن و ملک بر آدمیان نوه می کنند گویا ازای اشرف اولاد آدم است خورشید آسمان و زمین نور مشرقین پرورده کنار رسول خدا حسین السلام علیک یا ابا عبدالله و علی الارواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله ابدا ما بقيت و بقي الليل و ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين send your salam to Imam Hussein in the way that you can hear the answer of Imam Hussein make sure that Imam Hussein is answering to you السلام على الحسين وعلى علي ابن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين ورحمة الله وبركاته سلام لا يا حسين يا حسين Yeah, same. Yeah, same.